Hello everyone. In this video lecture, let us understand module 2, modules and ports. In this lecture, let us understand how modules are defined with an example. We know that module is the basic building block of a Verilog HDL code. This module which is the basic building block consists of various parts. Let us understand each of them. Consider this to be a module. Every module declared must and should have a module name which is an identifier or a user defined variable followed by a port list which is a list of all the input and output port variables of the module. All the ports listed must be declared as either an input port or an output port or an in out port and the module can also contain a parameter definition for constants but this is optional. Except the parameter declaration, every module which we declare should have a module name, port list and port declarations. Once these three declarations have been done, it is important that we declare wires or register or any other variables that are needed in a program. Along with this, we can have data flow statements using the keyword assign. Depending on the description, we can instantiate lower level modules in the program. We can have the always and initial blocks which represents the behavioral description or we can have tasks and functions defined inside a module as well. So these five elements, depending on the type of design, depending on the type of abstraction used, any one of them or a mixture of them can be available in a module definition. And every module which is declared must and should end with the keyword end module. So this entire block represents the components of a module. So module should be declared using the keyword module followed by the module name port list. Port after that we should have the port declarations. Depending on the functionality of the program, we can use either the data flow statements or the behavioral statements or we can use design methodologies where we instantiate lower level modules, we can define tasks and functions and even declare wires, register and other variables. Every module must end with the keyword end module. Let us understand this module definition considering an example. So we observe that every module begins with the keyword module and it ends with the keyword end module. Let us consider an example of an S bar R bar latch constructed using two cross coupled NAND gates. So we have two NAND gates connected in the cross coupled manner. We have the S bar and R bar inputs and the Q, Q bar outputs. Let us write the design block or the module definition of this particular circuit given here. Since we have the circuit diagram in the gate level diagram, it is easy for us to write a gate level description. So let us see how to write the description for this S bar R bar clutch in gate level abstraction. First, we write the first line of code, which is module followed by the module name. The module name here is sr underscore latch this name can be anything this is user defined module module name followed by the list of input output variables so we can observe here we have s bar we have r bar we have q q bar four variables are available of which s bar r bar represent the input variables q and q bar represent the output variables in the first line, we do not declare input and output. Instead, we just list all the input and output variables. So we have Q, Q bar, S bar, R bar as the terminal list. That is the input output terminals. We just have to list them and close the parenthesis and end with a semicolon. Once the module declaration is done, out of this terminal list, input terminal list and the output terminal list, we have to identify the input and the output variables using suitable port declaration. So from this we know S bar and R bar are the input ports, Q and Q bar are the output ports. 
Inputs are declared using the keyword input. So we write input followed by the name of variables which behave as an input port. So we have input s bar r bar ends with a semicolon. Next we declare the output variables of this particular module. So we have q and q bar representing as the output of this particular module SR latch. Now we have to write the description of this particular module in terms of any level of abstraction. Since we have the gate level description, it is easy to write the gate level programming for this particular module. Consider these two primitives, gate primitives. We have the NAND gate primitives. So we have to now instantiate or invoke or call the NAND gate primitive which is already predefined in the library. So we just have to write NAND followed by a label to that NAND N1 which is optional and we should always write the output variable first and then the input variables because in the gate primitive function the output variable is first listed in the NAND primitive. So when we look at the first NAND gate, the output variable is Q and the input variables are S bar and the other input is Q bar. We have just listed them in order output, comma, inputs. Now we instantiate the second NAND gate. In the second NAND gate, we observe, we write NAND N2 is the label we are giving. When we observe the circuit, N2, the output is Q bar, inputs are Q and R bar. So we have listed output first and then the input variables which can be written in any order. So once this is done, we are done with the de definition of the module. We have to end the program by using the keyword end module. This is a simple definition of a module of an SR latch in gate level description. Now let us write a stimulus module for the design block which we just wrote. So the previous code that we wrote is the design block which describes the functionality of an SR latch. Now we shall write a stimulus module which will apply stimulus or inputs to the design block and test if this particular design block works according to the functionality. So the rules when we are writing a stimulus block is all the input variables that we have declared must be declared as a register variable. So let, we will be understanding about these data types in the further module. But remember a register data type is a data type which can hold the values. So in a stimulus module or in generally inputs that we apply will remain constant depending on the inputs the output changes. A variable which changes is a wire and the variable which remains constant is a register. The second rule is all the output variables in the design block must be declared as a wire because these output variables keep changing depending on the inputs. Next we need to instantiate or invoke or call the design block to which we have to apply the inputs or the stimulus. We can call the block either by order or by name. This concept we will be understanding in the later part of the module. After we have instantiated the design block, we have to assign values to the input in terms of binary numbers or any other data type accordingly using the initial block and then finally we end the code. So this is the objective of a stimulus module. Having understood the rules of writing a stimulus block, now let us build a stimulus block for the design block of the SR latch. So the first step is we de define a module, module stimulus. This is the module name we have given here. Remember the stimulus block just gives input values to the design block. It has no interface with the external world. So a stimulus block will not have any port list variables. So we are not going to list out any input and output ports for a stimulus or a test bench which is applied to test the design block. It is just going to be module followed by the module name. Then we don't have any input and output declarations here. We, we saw the first rule that all input variables are declared as register. So the input variables of the SR latch was SR. We are declaring that as REG. 
all output variables are declared as wire so the output variables of the sr latch was q q bar we are declaring that as a wire then the next step is we have to instantiate or call the design block so this name should be exactly the same name that we have given in the design block so sr underscore latch was the name we had given previously so sr latch followed by compulsorily this instance name you have to put a name here this naming is left to your choice i have just used m1 indicating instance 1 of module so if i'm calling this for the first time i'm writing this as m1 you can write any name here this is just a name given to the instance being called here and in the main module that is the design block we had listed the output variables first and then the input variables so it is important that i pass the variables in the same order so only when we this is by order method there is another method by name we shall understand that in the subsequent uh, video lectures so when it is by order we have to match exactly every variable in the order they are specified in the design block so we have q q bar the inputs are not of s and not of r because we are going to apply s and r inputs because it is an s bar r bar large we are applying the complement of s and complement of r values so this symbol the tilde symbol represents s bar and this symbol represents r bar once the instantiation is done it's now time to apply the inputs to apply the inputs or initialize the inputs we use the keyword initial followed by the keyword begin because we have multiple statements within this block the first value that we are going to get so we have a system task known as dollar monitor we will be understanding system tasks which monitors the signals mentioned in the list so when we write the signals to be monitored the signals will be displayed as well as whenever they are modified their values will be displayed so we are monitoring s r and q signals in that sr latch dollar time displays the timing instant at which changes occur to the signal we will be understanding about the system tasks in the further modules so now let us start giving the applying the input values to the sr let's take a reference waveform if we observe looking at the timing instance of this particular graph initially s and r both are zero so we have initialized s equal to zero r equal to zero the same can be written as s is equal to one tick binary zero r is equal to one tick binary zero now we want this zero to remain constant until some timing unit over here we want it to remain constant until five time units five to ten so after five time units we want s continues to remain zero we want r to change to one so the next line would be hash five hash five indicates after five time units r is equal to one in the same line we can write s is equal to zero r is equal to one as well since s is not changing we have just updated it as r equal to one now if we have to match these inputs according to the timing instances given here the first line itself should have a hash 5 indicating the s values are starting from 0 0 from the fifth timing instant now again after five time units we can observe that s is changing to 1 and r is changing to 0 so that observation can be compiled here as hash 5 that is after five time units we are making s as 1 and r as 0 then again after five time units s continues to remain 1 here and r changes to be 1 so only r changes so we can incorporate r is equal to 1 once we have completed all the input values given then we can end the initial statement which has a begin every begin must have an end statement and the module can also be ended as end module this is another example the same example with different timing instant so what happens if the timing instant is changed instead of hash 5 if we give hash 10 here then we can observe that hash 10 indicates 10 time units so we can observe the timing instance 
from one signal from, from one time and instant to the other there is 10 time units difference so hash 10 s is equal to 0 r is equal to 0 so it begins from 10th unit after 10 is 20 after another 10 is 30 and so on so in comparison with the previous waveform we find that this will have twice the clock period of the previous signal so in this video lecture we understood what is a module what are the components of a module and we took up one example of how to write a module for an SR large and saw its corresponding stimulus block. Thank you.